Well, thanks everybody for, for coming out tonight. Um, my name is John Alexander. I'm the head of school here at Groves. And before we launch into this presentation on reading, I wanted to make a couple of pitches for um, some of the things we do here that fall under our outreach umbrella. We have you know, a day school here that serves about 220 students, um, typical day school from September through June. But we also have um, an outreach program. You're part of the outreach program by sitting in the seats tonight. It's what we do outside of school. And I think this year we have about 31 different uh, events or workshops through the course of the year. You can find them um, in here back on the table there. And a couple that are coming up, we run a college fair and conference. And the fair is October Monday, October 3rd. We'll have between 50 and 60 colleges and universities from around the country here, um, all of them having some kind of LD support program within the college. And they'll be f any, from Vermont to California and everywhere in between. So that's a great event. And then on October 15th, we have, I think, I think it's the 15th, Saturday. Let me count backwards. Yes, 15th. Um, we'll have the college conference. The fair is where you, your child might end up in college, and the conference is how to get there, navigating the process of the application and, and so forth. So just a couple of those events coming up. And then I also wanted to make a pitch for our diagnostics program here. We have uh, two diagnosticians educational psychologists who give psychoeducational tests. And um, our primary person's been here 30 years, and he's really a good evaluator. And I think what makes his evaluations and our evaluations so good is that they're really for the parent, not for the clinician. So it's the, the, the numbers are easily translatable to you as to specific recommendations uh, for your child and what's going on for your child. So before we launch into um, this presentation on reading, including the five strands, I just want to give you a quick background of, of who I am in terms of uh, reading and why I'm talking about it. Um, this is my 26th year working with kids who struggle to read. And I started as a teacher in 1985. And over time, I spent about 20 years uh, teaching kids. And I've spent about 16 years uh, running schools that teach kids who struggle to read. So I have quite a bit of practical experience in reading, and I have done my graduate work in reading as well. And I think I know what I'm talking about. I hope, I hope you'll feel the same way at the end of this. Um, let me get an idea um, from you as, as to who you are. How many are here because you have a child who is struggling with reading? But the majority of you, how many of you are teachers who teach reading? And how many of you are administrators? And how many are college professors of, re of education? In education? Not, no. no, not in education. Good. Um, I say that because I have some uh, pretty strong feelings about how we prepare teachers in colleges of ed. Uh, to teach reading. And that's not here in Minnesota, but that's across the country. And I've run schools in the, on the East Coast and in California and now here. And I can tell you it's a nationwide problem. So what I'd like to do is in the course of the presentation um, to have you interrupt with any questions that you might have. Don't save them for the end. Or any equally important, any comments that you might have because I found these presentations to to be best when they're interactive. And I do have some examples as we get into the presentation. I'm going to try to finish this by 8. Um, and if we run a little long, you're more than welcome to get up at any time. So if you, at quarter after 7, if you've had enough, I understand. Uh, I, I won't hold it against you at all. Uh, but I'll try to have it finished up by 8. If we run longer, that's fine too. Uh, so where was I going? Um, Questions during, comments during, and I have some examples of errors that kids make in spelling. And when we think of emerging or struggling readers, we have to think of reading and spelling as being interlocked. 
Okay, if, you te if you're teaching reading, you need to be teaching spelling in the same concepts. So the examples I have of spelling mistakes, if you've ever s heard me talk before, and I've talked all around the cities and across the country, you've probably not seen me across the country, but if you've seen any of these examples uh, and you know the answer because you've seen this presentation, uh, don't, please don't try to impress us because there's a reason why I'm asking you to guess at it, okay? All right, without further ado. Hmm. Well, I might have, okay, here we go. So tonight what I'd like to do is, is talk to you about the consequences of what happens when we uh, have students and adults in our society who can't read. The, the consequences are, are enormous, both from an individual standpoint, from that child in fourth grade who is now moved from learning to read to reading to learn and he hasn't learned to read yet the consequences are of self-esteem doubt of whether he's even going to uh, be an engaged student are huge so the personal consequences but they're also huge con consequences for society and we have a uh, prison system filled with illiterate folks uh, 70 percent of prisoners don't read above a fourth grade level and you think how many prisoners are in prison because um, they struggled in school and took some unsavory uh, paths and lives in life and we know it costs over thirty thousand dollars to incarcerate that's coming from taxpayers money so if we could just save ten percent of prisoners because we caught them early uh, and save them from the penal system society would be a lot richer I'm going to pr uh, present some reading statistics to you, quite a few of those actually. And then we're going to get into what are the five strands of reading and what make for tenets of good reading instruction, as well as some reading policy work that I've been involved in in the state. And, uh, and throughout we'll have Q&A. Uh, before we jump into some of the statistics in reading, I'd like an interactive exercise for you to tell me what you need to have as a, as a child or as an adult to be able to read? What, what are the components that we need to have to read? Anybody can start. Yeah, you have to, have, you have to be able to communicate at some level. So that's yeah. one strand. Memorize, conversation. Um, you have to have, yeah, you have to have memory. You have to be able to hear correctly. You have to be able to hear correctly. So I'll throw that into communication. Yes, phonemic, where, what is phonemic awareness? Being able to manipulate yeah. sounds. The ability to manipulate sounds, and we'll talk that, about that a lot more later. So phonemic awareness you have to have. What else do you have to have? What about just the ability to want to learn, the desire? Motivation, okay. Are you talking about the five strands? I am talking about the five strands. Phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and reading. That's right. Those are the five strands. It's phonemic awareness. You have to have the ability to manipulate sounds within words without any abstract representation over the sound, without any letters. You have to have phonics. Phonics is symbol sound correspondences. So a child has to know when he sees the letter that that sound is p. Okay, so that's phonics. Um, fluency is the ability to read at a certain rate with accuracy and we, we and some would say with prosody with being able to inflect your voice you have to have vocabulary right you have to understand the meaning of words in order to have comprehension and comprehension is the last strand it's what we all the intent of reading is for understanding so you have to have all of that and we know that kids learn to re 